Well, hello, everybody. I am back again for my long-awaited review. I'm a little behind this week. Well, not really, because the next episode hasn't come out. And actually, I have two weeks, because next week's a freaking review week. So I'm pretty safe. But I am back for my next review of RuPaul's Drag Race Season 6, Episode 12, Sissy That Walk. Woo, what a episode. We finally find out who our finalists are after this episode. And let me tell you... You know, I'm pretty ecstatic. What? What? Oh, this? I'm, I'm not biased. Maybe I'm a little bit biased. Okay, so maybe I'm a lot a bit biased. A lot a bit. But, you know, Bianca's my bitch. Love her. Go Team Bianca! Now, I usually say this at the end of every video, but I'm going to say it at the beginning this time because I really, really mean it. I appreciate every single one of you that have left comments, have subscribed, have watched my reviews. That really means a whole lot to me and I don't know, I might be doing something right because my subscriber count keeps growing like at a faster rate than it ever has and it's all because of you guys and, and gals and thank you so much because you know, if nobody was watching, it would really be no point of doing these things. So I'm glad you enjoy my reviews. I'm glad some of you think I'm funny. I think some of you think I'm a bastard. Maybe a lot of you think I'm a bastard. But, you know, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. So now let's go on to the review. So today's like a scorcher, everybody. Like, whoo, I am sweating like balls. So, yeah, I'm, I'm going to be really scatterbrained today because I didn't take my Adderall. Or I, th I took my Adderall and I really don't have ADHD. It's one of the two. So yeah, I had to um, roll down the windows, so you're probably going to hear sounds of nature and maybe the occasional passerby going, what the fuck is he doing? Why is he talking to himself? But yeah, it's so hot, I can't keep the windows up or I'm going to drench my awesome Bianca Del Rio shirt and that ain't going to be pretty. And I know that it's like this car is really good with the acoustics as far as being like soundproof. But, you know, we're just going to have to deal with wind and nature noises because I'm brown and you know us brown folks, we sweat like easy. So let's talk Sissy That Walk. Final four time, folks. It's the final four. I know there are so many people like still up in arms about Dalo's elimination last episode, and I don't blame them one bit. I think, though, if they had saved Dela instead of Darian, then it would have given the producers fits because when it came down to deciding the final three, we already knew Bianca would be a shoe in naturally because let's face it, she's like the only queen in drag race history that has never been low safe or in the bottom two her entire run she's been either the winner of her challenges or high safe so it'd just be natural that she's in a finale because if she wasn't then there'd be some fucked up shit going on and of course Adore is like the producer's favorite so she would naturally get in as well I mean you don't want to like freaking eliminate your cash cow you know what I mean and then that would leave Courtney versus Dela if Dela were still there and again, the producers have been giving Courtney the look. She's so beautiful and camera ready and marketable. And let's use her to extend our brand. Blah, blah, blah edit. So if they would have made her the reason Dela finished fourth instead of Darian making Dela finish fourth, then the public would like lash out at Courtney and that would damage her brand. Like they've lashed out at Darian unfairly in my opinion. So they had to sacrifice Dela. So it would make the final three decision a lot easier. So that makes sense, right? No? Yeah, yeah, I tried. Oh, and more about this branding shit later, okay? It's one of the moments that really pissed me off this entire episode. Just one of the moments. There's, there was a couple, I think. Let's compare and contrast the two titans of this competition in terms of polish. We've got Bianca, and then we've got Cotney Act. And their respective reaction to a door sewing challenge win. And then I'll let you decide who is, in fact, more suitable for this brand. We have Bianca, our professional seamstress, and our mother hen, very proud of Adore. In fact, Bianca is usually one of the first queens to congratulate the winners of the previous challenges because why? She's not a hateful bitch in real life. And then we got Courtney. We get her confessional where she uses that high-pitched Stewie Griffin voice when she questions why Adore won because all she made was a white corset and a tutu with sparkles on it. Like, Courtney... You are wearing a damn sequined wrap, probably hot glued to your sequined bra. The only thing daring about you is you wore a black wig. That's strike one, girl. Strike one. So then we get Courtney being a hateful bitch 
Strike number two. When she begins every sentence with, well, if I'm going to be brutally honest, her mistake is she put that beginning in the same sentence with Bianca Del Rio. Oh no, bitch. Oh no. Oh, and in case you didn't know, I'm hashtag Team Bianca. Team Bianca Del Rio. Hashtag Team Bianca Del Rio. Hashtag Crown the Clown. Hashtag Pack Your Shit. Hashtag Drag Race. I hope you all tweeted your support and left a lovely message on the RuPaul Drag Race Facebook page supporting our girl Bianca. Oh, and maybe a door too if you want to support door. We love a door too, but. Bianca, I have, and I will continue to do it every single day on Twitter and Facebook. I'm going to put Team Bianca every single day. But back to the disappointment known as Miss Act. Is that a freaking, what is that, a helicopter? I'm trying to record. Rude. It's like, ugh. Like, I can't believe I was such a fan of hers. Like, before the show started, you know, I would, like, watch hours of her on YouTube and watch her YouTube videos because I thought she was, like, the nicest, sweetest, and warmest, like, foil to Willem on all those trans-fashionable segments. Now I feel like a minority playing for the Los Angeles Clippers. I mean, that's how duped I feel. Oh, and on to Miss uh, Lake. Bianca ain't cracking, girl. She's just playing some rope-a-dope. It was a wishful thinking, though, when you thought she was cracking under the pressure. You could see little cracks in her armor. No. So the theme for today's episode, as you can tell, is Alan's going to be really biased because he can. So I think, like, the only people that won't dislike me are the Bianca and Adore fans. So you can also say that I'm also a team I give no fucks beat it, gremlin. Oh, God, I'm shinier than a star right now. Oh, gosh, I got the J-Lo natural dewy glow. Hey, hey. We're spared having to go through a mini challenge. Yay! Golf claps. Golf claps. So we launch into our main challenge, and into the workroom is Bendela Visage. Actually, it's Michelle Visage, but you know, the whole whatever. Michelle's there to announce the final challenge, and it's of course the queens appearing in RuPaul's Sissy That Walk music video. You know, it's our time honored tradition of making decent videos to sometimes not so decent music in my high registered Courtney Act voice. I think I just get so desensitized because we hear it every episode, but Sissy That Walk ain't that bad of a song. Oh, and we get an elimination afterwards too, which is like, uh oh. There goes those final four rumors. Rue switching it up again. So we get a snippet of the queens rehearsing sissyography in the workroom with the help of that luscious chocolate man, Jamal Sims. Darian Lake wanted to unwrap that chocolate bar. How you doing? They, of course, show Adore and Courtney getting it right away with Darian and Bianca struggling. I say struggling loosely with Bianca because we see that once she puts the jokes aside and applies herself, she begins picking up the steps rather quickly. So it leaves our resident queen edited to be mean, Darian, to struggle on her own. And we get some more of Courtney, I want to be a shady lady confessional. And it's like, yay, I think I need to ram a finger down my throat because I've eaten too much of Courtney act confessionals this season. So like every season, I usually cringe when it comes down to the queens having their one-on-one -on -one Tic Tac lunch with RuPaul because it's usually a gush fest or overbearingly mushy or just really shows the queens trying to be genuine but serves only to highlight how boring they really are and how disconnected we are as the fans to who they really are. Case in point, Courtney act. I was so disinterested in her lunch that I was screaming scripting this video during her segment and I realized I missed her portion and I was like fuck it I'm not rewinding it moving on oh PS the Bianca eye roll when Courtney thinks she's coming from the heart every time she talks it's like come on Courtney can you be likable a little this episode I'm getting a headache hating you but Darian's lunch with Rue was a little better in my opinion I actually listened to the story of her getting invited to leave from her own home by a disapproving mother it wasn't drawn out and it was more matter of fact and I appreciated this genuine Darian without the facade. She slowly redeemed herself this episode, I think. And we know why the editors are giving her a favorable, you know, arc. You know, dot, dot, dot. But I don't know about y'all, but I was living for the workroom segment with Bianca, Adore, and Courtney when they were figuring out what looks they want to like present for their final runway. Okay, and I'm a little mad because both Courtney and Bianca pulled out some fierce shit. And we didn't get to see it. Like the, that hooded ensemble Bianca showed off or even a sparkly black mini dress that she didn't even wear either. I was like, Bianca, why didn't you wear that damn hooded dress? It was beautiful and it was different. It would have been like Manila Luzon season three, but more sophisticated. And I was even loving Courtney's gold sparkly, um, I don't, I don't know, whatever it was going to be. I'm not sure what body part it was going to cover, but even that looked better than what she finally chose. And then she showed off her Priscilla Queen of the Desert wig. It was like awesome sauce. Adore, of course, remarked that she didn't have, you know, the expensive stuff that they did, but, you know, give her time. And in a few years, she'll really polish it up. It's just not her season to win. 
Hint, hint, hint. Go hashtag Team Bianca. Next, we have like Bianca and Adore's lunch with Rue. Okay, so here's my complaint. Why did Bianca get the shortest lunch segment? It's like they're trying to marginalize her. Or is it that she's like that put together and undamaged that Rue like had no sob story to milk out of her? She of course made Rue laugh and Rue points out how helpful and nice she is. And if Bianca was prepared to show the world this softer side and Bianca goes, oh, you're filming this shit? There's like tape in those cameras? I died, just died. She's always on. She's always on. But then in stark contrast, we get Adore's lunch, and it's like every editor's dream. I'm in like no way bashing Adore because she's like my second favorite behind Bianca and, and like the one besides Bianca that could probably deserve this title. But Rue was laying on that you got potential stick really thick, schmoozing it up to the point where it's like, do we even need to watch last episode since Rue has her mind made up who's going to win, even though she says she doesn't have her mind made up? So like you could tell that there was so much going on in this episode that they were having trouble cramming in everything. It's like that porno site it's gonna hurt.com you know where that dude castro was trying to stuff his you know into um you know wait what's porn i'm just so innocent i have no idea i practically fart rainbows and sparkles people but anywho the segments that should have been longer were getting trimmed down to the bone like for example the shooting of the sissy that walk video first off the girls look amazeballs especially bianca and adore of course Bianca's showing off those stems. They had to perform in front of the green screen and you can see Bianca and Courtney were nailing that choreography and they were like completely in sync. And then Adore and Darian had some sinking issues. Then they had to sissy that walk on a treadmill while wearing heels. And when Bianca says under her breath, we're gonna die, I lost it. She's so good at that under your breath commentary, similar to that pillow fight segment, like way back in her premiere episode, which was like episode two. Plus they had fans blowing on them and Bianca was stumbling around, but she was looking great. Courtney looked like she may have taken some hits of X or Adderall with her like frenetic energy. And Adore was killing it as usual. She's good at those music video things. And Darian stole one of Adore's pussy moves. I was like, um, Manila did that first on All Stars part one, y'all. And ew, <laughs> I said pussy. Ew, God, it's such an ugly word. <laughs> penis, 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 dick, cock, balls. Like, okay, okay, I feel better now. Oh, here comes a truck, yay. Bitches always trying to kill my vibe. Okay, let's talk acting challenge. WTF was going on. I mean, I was like thoroughly entertained. I was with Bianca on this one. I was like, who writes this shit? Part one has our queens pretending they're like, that they're fresh to Hollywood, doing their first photo shoot with an asshole photographer, which is RuPaul. That makes them do like these most absurd poses ever. I noticed Adora has worn like her drag queens of comedy ensemble again, which is cool because I liked it the first time. For the most part, I think Adora and Bianca nailed the first acting challenge. Adora could replicate all the moves that they were asking for and Bianca just looked funny as hell trying to. And Darian was okay for me too. She's good at hamming it up when she needs to. And Courtney fell flat. She just doesn't have like that dynamic personality for acting. She's more like, I don't know, like Australian Katie Couric or something. Just kind of one note. Bonus points to Adore for knowing a Phoebe Cates movie line. You know, Phoebe Cates, remember her? She's, she was like in Gremlins 2. I can't remember any of her dialogue. And she's like in that infamous getting out of the pool scene. That 80s movie, was it like Fast Times at Ridgemont High? And that dude's like whacking off and watching her. Oh, and did y'all see Darian do her Molly, you in danger, girl. She stole my line from last review. The first Adore's pussy move, now my ghost line. She has to be stopped. So part two has the queens in a dressing room, kind of makeshift dressing room that they create in the back, you know, gold bar or whatever. And it's it was like, I don't know, like a Diana Ross slash Dream Girls kind of moment. RuPaul was dressed like an extra from Good Times. Thanks, Bianca. And the girls had to act like drunken, washed up supermodel slash actresses while Rue's character is there to take them back home to where they came from. I'm sure there's like a moment like this in like some kind of movie or something from somewhere, but it escapes me right now. Well, it kind of devolves into our queens going hysteric and throwing bottles and tantrums. I'm still kind of lost about this whole thing though, but whatevs. I think Bianca does a great job again. And Courtney was okay despite relying on her props to carry her through her, like her performance. And Darian was flat until the final flourish where she like hammed it up again. Gosh, Alan, what's with like the pig and Darian references? But she was like on the floor rolling around and just going over the top like someone just bought like the last breakfast bite at 7-Eleven. Oh my God, I'm like not even consciously doing this, I swear. Sorry, Darian. I think Adora was okay, but it kind of felt like an extension of her Anna Nicole Smith. And I loves Matthew. Matho, Matthew. I'll get your name right one day, I swear. He's a good director and he'd make a really good judge, I think. 
And and he does like this bearded lady thing. His makeup skills are like way on point. Okay, let's skip ahead to Courtney's Strike Three, though, shall we? Or is it Strike Eleven? Like I really lost count at this point because she's like been annoying me this whole episode. This is in reference to her workroom scene where the queens are prepping for the final runway and doing their makeup and like reminiscing with the others about their first impressions about the other queens. Like Adore admitting she was scared of Bianca at first, and we saw what happened when they like first interacted. It wasn't pretty. Like if you don't understand, watch the first Untucked where both groups are in the silver lounge it just wasn't pretty but like a door we're all glad that those two patched it up because they are so close now Courtney starts going in about how Bianca can't complete a sentence without a joke in reference to like Bianca saying she wouldn't have lent Laganja a cincher like she did for a door and Bianca proves her wrong by saying a sentence that wasn't a joke she goes Courtney is an asshole but then this queen from down under has the nerve to say Bianca might not possess the compassion and warmth to be the next drag superstar Courtney I'm gonna have to ask you to take like a seat on Mars or something last time I checked you aren't the bitch that took two unseasoned queens under her wings this season while offering everyone else support and advice and sometimes even makeup help and sewing help. And you aren't the one most fans on social media are in love with because of their compassion and worth and talent. So I don't know who you're talking about, girl. So let's talk about this final runway. What is up with Santino's like nonsensical answers to Rue this year? Like every time she presents Santino, he says something so not funny and like nonsensical. I'm like, <sighs> It's like week after week. Like, but I was a little underwhelmed by this runway. I'm really not gonna lie. Adore looked, you know, all right in that sparkly mini dress, but I was kind of eh about her hair overall. But, it, you know, it was it was nice. And I loved Bianca's dress. No shock there. Like, it was an amazing blue satin with that shoulder and hair embellishment. And it was beautiful. And she was, you know, padded just right. And I think Bianca's given us, like, the most diverse hair this entire season. Which is saying a lot because, you know, Courtney owns a wig line. So she shouldn't be getting out wigged. Speaking of Courtney, she looks like she always does in her, like, final runway look. You know, she's pretty but underwhelming. <laughs> And Darren came out in another dress, but it was a beautiful dress. And here comes that damn truck again. Like, I know bigger girls don't have that many, you know, options. And I'm not going to fault her for this dress. It was stunning on her, and her hair looked great. But as I said, overall, this was a very disappointing runway. I felt like Courtney and Bianca had looks that were far better than they showed us. So I'm curious as to why they chose what they ended up choosing. And the judges' critiques were weird, too. Ah! Michelle Visage was like even being nice to everybody. Like I was waiting for the hammer to drop and she didn't drop it. Courtney even did a prat fall because Michelle gave her a 100% compliment. But Santino was a little more Simon Cowell, giving universal praise for Adora and Bianca, but he had a few issues with Courtney and Darian. I'm just glad it was like a short and sweet segment right there because you know, I, the judges critiques have been all over the place sometimes. Okay. So here's why I think Bianca should win the title. Not only has she been the winner or high safe the entire season, no one can boast a record like that. When it came down to the final four on the runway answering why they should be in America's Next Drag Superstar, Bianca slayed it. Adore was like on the funny side with her answer and you can see she just needs some more refinement. It wasn't a polished answer and she was like off the cuff, but she's likable. She's so gosh darn likable. But Bianca laid it out on the table with such a well thought out and genuinely sentimental answer. I mean, this was like, hi, I'm Miss Honduras and I'm gonna take this damn Miss Universe crown, bitch. That's how good her answer was. Easily the best answer by a landslide. And I was drawn in from the first words to her last. I was like, bitch just won. Hashtag crown it. Like people need to focus on that answer and how good it was for its like sincerity and intelligence. And then we get to Courtney, who did another self-indulgent answer about how she's already an idol in Australia, blah, blah, blah. Darian's answer was okay, but I mostly forgot what she said. So must be a good answer by default. So let's get to final deliberations. Ugh, audible sigh. I know they're trying to keep it objective and every queen got dinged and no one got like left unscathed. They they really hark on Adore for being green and unrefined, though Michelle thinks she's like so darn charming. And Bianca, they all agree, is professional to a T. And Santino says she brought intelligence like no other, but Michelle critiqued her variety of runway. And they only show three dresses, and I'm like, had they shown her other looks, they would have seen she's not quite as one note as they keep making her out to be. What really bothered me, and I mentioned this earlier, is that 
Santino dubbing that made it sound like they added it in in post-production about Bianca being abrasive and maybe not what the brand is looking for. It pissed me the hell off because it sounds like they added it in like the last minute to lead people to believe Bianca's not right for the title. But I feel like it's a cop-out, you know, of the, for the show if, because if Bianca doesn't win, to like put that bullshit comment in to steer us to the other favorite in this competition, which is sad because I love Adore's guts, but I don't think she outperformed Bianca. If Bianca was not there, then yes, Adore is the obvious winner but Bianca is there she earned it even Rue said she had no problem helping other Queens because she's not threatened by any of the other Queens so anywho with Courtney act they mentioned her beauty again and her polish the cameras love her when she's not talking blah 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 but thankfully Michelle bashes her final answer as being as being generic and not moving at all Santino goes on to say she brought such amazing looks on the runway and they just show her Klaus Nomi outfit and that swan outfit that, to be honest, sucked except for the wings. And two looks doesn't count for an amazing body of work, Santino. Darian's final critique was interesting to me. All they could say is she brought good face, really. We could tell she's not going to make it to the finale by this point. Okay, so yeah, I had to take a break from filming because it just got so flipping hot earlier that I was like, screw this, I'm gonna take a break. So that's why the lighting has changed and it's all dramatic film noir lighting. It's sun setting and you know, blah, what can I do? But now the temperature has dropped a little, so it's a little more bearable. So now we can finish with this review, hey? So like at this point of the, the episode, we're like in the home stretch. So now we gotta talk about that final lip sync for your life with all four queens having to lip sync. And I was like, at first I was like, four queens on one stage? How's that gonna work? I think it's like way too many. And I was like, it was hard enough with three queens on one stage and now they have four. And I was like, why can't they go back to like the times when it was just the final two lip syncing, you know, so we could focus on the two. But it's funny when Rue has them, you know, lip syncing or g getting ready to lip sync and Adore's like gearing up for it. She's like shaking her limbs. She's like, let's do this. this bitches, let's do this. But you know what really happens though, in all honesty, I think, is they actually split them up into two groups of two. Because I think it was Adore and Darian in one lip sync group. And then it was Bianca and Courtney in the other lip sync group. Watching them perform and it was like some really crafty, you know, editing and intersplicing of scenes. You don't see all four queens kind of crossing each other. You see Darian and Adore at one point crossing each other, and you see Bianca and Courtney crossing each other, but you never see all four at once. So that's what I think happened. It's like two groups of two, and it makes sense because you can't have all four queens up there and then get, have enough room for them to actually, you know, do what they're supposed to do, especially Adore because, you know, she loves to flail around. So it could be like freaking, you know, Unchained Melody or, you know, Christina Perry's like a thousand years, and, you know, the door still be flailing around with all that energy. <laughs> I'm convinced, so it makes more sense to split them up. But as far as the actual lip sync goes, this is my thoughts. Like I said, I think Adore brought some real high energy, but she seems to rely on just that high energy style. And it sometimes, you know, doesn't need to be that high energy to make the song work. And it's similar to when her and Jocelyn did that Aretha Franklin song and they both were flailing and they really didn't need a flail on that type of song. Dora's young, she's still learning her style and, she, and she's still getting, you know, polished up, so. But she did bring a lot of energy. I was actually pleasantly surprised by Bianca's lip sync, you know, how she was strutting her stuff all over that runway because people like, see their her footage online and they say, oh, bitch can't lip sync, that's gonna be her downfall, she can't lip sync. I was like, she chooses not to lip sync. You know, she began her career lip syncing and she did Broadway, so she knows how to perform and do movements. She just chooses not to. Plane. That's the problem about living near an airport. It's just like planes everywhere. But like I said, lip syncing isn't her strength, but she can pull off a lip sync when she has to and she proved it in the last night's final lip sync. I, I mean, I think she had all the right notes. She didn't overdo the song whatsoever. It was it was just pleasantly a surprisingly good performance from Bianca in that lip sync. Darren to me was similar to Adora. She was just doing like too much extra stuff in parts she didn't have to do extra stuff in. And of course, there was Courtney bringing up the rear. She's not as good of a lip syncer as I thought she'd be because I guess she's a much better live singer. But I mean, she wasn't anywhere near horrible, but compared to the other three, Courtney was really flat. But when the lip sync was over, didn't y'all love Bianca's grin at the end? It was like freaking the Joker in Batman. She was like ecstatic. She got through that lip sync. I think she had a lot of fun doing it. So in the end, predictably, 
Rue cuts Darian before the finale. I mean, it's like, whoa, that was a big shock there. Who was going to go home? Not the other three. I mean, she was close, but she got the Latrice Royale shaft. It's like, oh, well. So this leaves us with our ABC final three. And you know, I'm really not unhappy about this final three. I mean, these are the three big names this season. Although, if I had my way, I'd probably possibly replace Courtney with Dela. You know, if it was, you know, up to me to make the final decision, I'd probably, you know, replace Courtney with Dela. But, you know, I mean, in all honesty, Courtney deserves to be there too, I guess. I mean, it was a really strong season, in my opinion. But, I mean, if we went by performance alone, and let's just skip all that potential crap and all that, and but just base it on, like, performance, it should really have been maybe Bianca, Dela, and Courtney in the final three. I mean, yes, Adore had three wins, but she had, like, plenty of low safes and bottom twos to counter it. But I'm happy my girl Adore is in the finale with Bianca. I mean, they're both the bestest. So there it is, our final three. So don't forget to go to Twitter, show your support. If you are hashtag Team Bianca, hashtag Team Adore, or hashtag Team Courtney, go to Twitter with those hashtags and use at RuPaul's Drag Race and hashtag Drag Race in the same tweet. Bianca, 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 subliminal messaging. Bianca, Bianca, Bianca. And then you should go to Facebook to RuPaul's Drag Race official Facebook page and hashtag your team again along with the hashtag drag race again. I'm, like I said before, I'm doing it every single day until Bianca Del Rio realizes how much I love her. Well, that was my review of the, the Sissy That Walk episode, episode 12. I was considering doing a review of Untucked, but, but it was mostly like a filler episode to me. It was just fluff, just more talk about each other, past contestants, etc., etc. I mean, there was some gems in there. Bianca was like dissing Magneto crotch face. Magnesium crab apple. Oh, Magnolia Crawford. That's her name. That's the one. And it was pretty good TV. But it was just a lot of reminiscing and such. And, you know, I'm just fucking with y'all. You know I'm going to talk about Untucked. And I can't believe you shady apes let me go the whole season calling that damn silver lounge the Interior Illusions Lounge. I'm going to fire my research assistant for that grievous error. My name has been sullied and I won't stand for it. So you all know I've been shipping Adora and Bianca the whole season because they are so gosh darn cute and i love when adore just gushes all about how awesome bianca is and even mentions that moving final answer given by bianca and how it brought tears to adore's eyes and adore could thank bianca forever for all the help and guidance she gave her this season and she keeps complimenting bianca for her helpfulness and her kind heart the whole time did y'all have that same reaction bianca and adore had when courtney was gushing her compliments to darian like when bitch knew darian was not going to be declared no winner wait Wow, that was my awesome command of the English language. I think it just disappeared right there. And she knew Darian was definitely not making it to the final three, so it seems so contrived, like many of Courtney's robotic-like, polished pageant girl interactions with the others this season. But that bitch face that Bianca and Adore were throwing subtly was, like, priceless. And I'm just gonna go out on a limb here and say that if this untuck were a competition, then Bianca would have smoked it. I was getting antsy myself when Darian kept going on and on and on and on, and I'd be rolling my eyes right next to Bianca, we'd be like twinsies. Because I was like, damn, queen, we're on a tight schedule here. Wrap it up, B. Or, or D. So then there was a lot more like talking and queen on queen analysis. And I think like at that time, I was more interested in whether I should drink the Merlot or the Cabernet. But then I decided I want vanilla vodka and mixed with anything. And then I realized, damn, I missed some of this chatter. Think about what drink I wanted to make. And then I kind of used that term miss rather loosely. I did catch Kate Darian calling herself fat over and over. That was kind of entertaining. Oh, and I was also laughing at the queen saying, like, Courtney was, like, manic the way she danced in her video. Like, she was going through, like, meth withdrawals or something. They didn't say the meth part, but that's what it looked like. But I'm going to give some points to Darian for the mega clock. She gets in on Courtney, reminding that queen how she always starts her damn sentences with, well, if I'm going to be brutally honest, before spewing forth some verbal diarrhea, I was like, damn, hashtag called it. Since we're mega clocking, Adore gets one in on Courtney too, shooting down her like pageant answer about feeling like a drag superstar even if she doesn't win. I was like, we're not playing that I'm just so honored to be nominated PC answer bullshit here. I was like, call her out, Adore. Hashtag call it. God, I'm more hateful than Darian Lake. I must have been swimming through those crisp, hateful waters of Darian Lake. So 
I like when they're discussing, and believe me, y'all, it was nothing but a lot of discussing and talking and talking some more, but not one other queen mentions Bianca being in danger of going home. So, like, the other three at one point or another are pointed out to be, in like, the fourth place queen, except for Bianca. And I wouldn't say anything against Bianca either, because she said it in that last segment, she'll knife you down. So, yeah, there wasn't really much more about this untucked. You know, the last episode is just, like, a whole lot of reminiscing. You know, oh, we made it this far. We're the only ones that had this awesome experience, and blah 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 we'll be friends forever Fr you know like freaking say by the bell you know friends forever god am i the only one who watches other tv so yeah whew. made it through that painful episode of untucked it was very painful for me i don't like the last episode of untucked usually this one was just more painful than any other one that i've seen in recent memory I just wish they were like more shady. It was just not, uh, it was just not enough shade this episode. So next week's episode is like the countdown to the finale episode where RuPaul recaps the season, gives us some, you know, unseen footage and he invites a lot of our favorite drag queens from past seasons to commentate on how they feel about, you know, the fashions and the fights and those other unseen moments. And it's usually entertaining. So next week, that's what we get. We get a clip show. So I don't know if I'll have a review for next week unless, you know, something really strikes my fancy to review. So if, if nothing does, then I might not have a review next week. We'll see. But I do want to make a shout outs video and that's going to be coming up soon about you know, shouting out all the people that have supported me thus far, saying my thank yous for getting over 100 subscribers, and now I'm approaching 150, I think. So I want to do a video on that. Maybe I'll do that next week to, like, fill the void because, you know, the finale is two weeks away. And uh, from what I understand, I, I heard they're filming different segments, like, for each queen wins. And somebody told me, like, they film a segment where there's, like, a double win, a dual winner, and I was like... I don't know how I feel about that. It's probably, it would be like Bianca and Adore, but I don't know how I feel if, about them sharing the crown. Leave some comments below, because you know how I love comments. Leave it below. Tell me what team you're on, hashtag team whoever, and whatever comments you want to leave. I always enjoy your comments. I try to answer every single one. Subscribe, tell your friends. What is up with these goddamn trucks today? Here comes another one. I feel like I'm at a truck stop. Well, that could be kind of kinky too. Hey, trucker. Oh, uh, he wasn't that cute. Mm, wasn't that cute. Hashtag doesn't have a chance. So that brings me to the end of my review of episode 12, Sissy That Walk. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all your comments. Leave comments below. Let me know what team you're on. Hopefully you're team Bianca like me, but you know, I won't hate you if you're on team somebody else. I mean, I, I'll slightly hate you if you're on team Courtney, but I won't really hate you if you're on team Adore. Leave comments below. Subscribe. Let me know how I'm doing. Tell your friends. Thumbs up. Sit. Thumbs up, sit. Sequins. Sequins, sequins gowns. But yeah, that was my review. Thanks for watching. I'll see you maybe next week or maybe in two weeks. We'll see. If any of you guys are Teen Wolf fans, I've got my Teen Wolf reviews coming up because it's only like 45 days till the next season starts. So I've got two more reviews coming up. So if you're interested in that, check that out too on my channel coming up. So that's my review. Thanks for watching. And I will catch all you beautiful guys and gals later.